All right, so we just got done watching that the video on some different ways to move machinery. Um, so what I want to talk about now is I want to expand a little bit more on uh, one particular thing that they're talking about is jacks. Um, this type of jack that we have here is typically what, what our contractors are going to use in this area. Um, it's a pretty simple design. Um, and for those of you who are older, maybe you, you recognize a similar, similar idea of a, uh, of a bumper jack of older cars. So all you do is you, you can lift either up here or up here. Um, so here's a load point or cap. Here's an auxiliary load point. These are a couple things, a couple different areas where you can lift off. Either one is fine. Um, if you look in the manual that I gave you guys, it, it points out some of these, it points out the load points, it also points out some of the, uh, the different aspects of it. For instance, pretty obvious, handle. We have a handle here and a handle here, okay? If you notice, I moved this lever here. This is called a reversing lever. This reversing level, lever will do exactly that. Right now I have it in the up position. So you can see it's going up. And let's say I lift my machine. Um, I want to bring it down. What I will do is then move that to the down position. And now it will go down. So um, if you take a look on here, we do have a little safety sticker on here. You want to read that before you go ahead and use the jack. Um, they should be all similar, but there may be one specific thing that a my manufacturing has different than than what his has on, or than what this one has on. So it is possible if you look at page four of that manual, it's going to tell you that even if this is not on here, it's possible you can use the jack. It's acceptable in the manufacturer's eyes, but you need to follow what it says under step two, according to the manual. And I believe basically all it says is you want to run it through all the way up and down, make sure that there aren't any problems. Um, some other things that you want to inspect is you want to look at the rack. Are any of the teeth, um, are they broken? Are they chipped? Are they worn? Are there any cracks in the rack? Are there any cracks in the toe? Are there any cracks in the cap? Um, now, if you notice, what I'm doing here is I'm pressing down on this lever here, and I'm going to lift up here at the same time. If I don't hang on to this, it's going to come slamming down, make a lot of noise, and if your finger is there, or your hand is there, if you have this part of your hand, it's probably going to cut right through that. If your finger is there and it's all the way up, it's going to either A, cut your finger off, or B, give you a very bad blood blister. Now some different things about the jack is, like I said, you have the lifting cap, we also have the auxiliary toe, we have the base down here, um, the reversing lever, we have uh, two different socket pockets for the handle to go in. Here's what the handle looks like. We can put it in here or here, depending on how we have the jack orientated um, in relationship to the machine or the object that we're going to be lifting. Now if you notice, uh, I showed you the handle. The handle, this particular handle is 36 inches long by 1 inch in diameter. Um, the manufacturer makes it specific for this jack. We, you do not just go to a steel rack, and grab one inch diameter round stock, and cut it 36 inches long, or however long we want to cut it, and, and put it in here. The manufacturer designed that handle to be used with this jack, and that's what's supposed to be done. Um, what are you using this thing? You, you want to make sure that you have a separate form foundation. Are you going to set it up on sand? Hopefully not. If you are, then you need to be cribbing down plates on top of the cribbing to disperse the load over a larger area. Um, when you put the handle in the jack, put it in here, uh, this is not the best idea. What would happen if my hand slipped off? It's going to catch me in the jaw, uh, catch me in the head, something like that. So you want to stand clear and make sure this whole area here is clear for the whole sweep of the handle that it's not going to come in contact with anything else. No conduit, no uh, no airline piping or anything like that. Uh, like I said, you want to make sure that you keep your fingers clear. Uh, I mentioned uh, this dropping down. Well, as you're going up or down, you want to keep your hands out of here. It could get pinched in the rack. 
you might keep your hands out here um, or below here. If you notice there's a stop here, and there's a stop here. Okay? Those are actually positive stops. Um, you want to see if those are worn. They, they really shouldn't be um, unless the jack was abused. If it was abused, then you need to get a different jack and then continue on. Um, another pinch point could be here also. Um, when you flip it up or down, with reverse you see how quick that comes down. If your finger is there, it could pinch your finger. Uh, you want to make sure your fingers are, are free from underneath it as you're coming down. Um, immediately after after you get done lifting it, so put this in the up position. I come up. That's as high as I want to get it. I have it released. I immediately take the handle out. I've personally seen it where uh, an individual left the handle in. Uh, what the problem was is the jack wasn't functioning right. Uh, I was going to have another person with another jack lift the object up so I could get this jack out. Then uh, foreman came by. He said he was going to show us how to take care of it. Great. I'm always up for learning new things. Uh, so. He, he put all his weight on the handle, lifted up. It didn't release. It didn't release. We didn't hear that click. He left the handle in there. It, it was down here like this. Um, and it just flew up like that. The handle flew out of the jack, almost hit the guy, it was maybe six inches away from his head, broke a piece off the, the object that we were moving, and we were done moving that object for the day. We, it was broke. They had to get a new one. Um, we had to go back sometime later and take out the old one and put in a new one. Uh, so once you get this lifted up where you want it to, you take the handle up, you want to put blocking in here. Then what we can do is we can put it in the down position, lower on the blocking, and remove the jack. These jacks are not designed for long-term um, long -term storage in an elevated position. Um, it's to lift it up or lower put it on blocking, get it on the ground, whatever it may be, take the jack out. Um, you want to make sure that there aren't any obstructions before you start coming down. So when I move this to the lower position, I want to make sure that there's no nothing in the way. No one can be in the way. Well, sometimes there's plastic shrouding. Maybe a guy puts blocking underneath that plastic shrouding. We come down on it, we break the plastic shrouding. Customer's not happy, brand new machine. Plastic shrouding's busted. So, you just want to take a quick you know, glance around, make sure that everything's clear. Talk to the guys that you're working with. Hey, everything clear? Your hand's clear? Okay, coming down. Um, if you're using more than one of these, uh, let's say we have a big object. Uh, this one is good for five tons. Let's say we have a 10 ton machine, so we need two of these. So what we need to do is we're going to be using these two at the same time. It's, it's not too hard when we have two guys working together. You can see what's going on. Okay? If you're not able to see each other, you're on the other ends of the machine, well, now we need to communicate to each other. Okay, I'm coming down on the handle, up on the handle, down on the handle, up on the handle, down on the handle, up on the handle. To try to stay consistent with your rhythm so the machine comes down nice and level. Otherwise, it'll be doing this thing, and if it's kind of top heavy, it's possible that it could flip over, and we want to keep ourselves as safe as we can. Um, so we can use this ratchet type jack to, to raise or lower uh, you know, a variety of things. Um, we just need enough room that we can get the base in there. With, with the toe, you can see the toe is a little bit higher than the base. Uh, well, why don't we just grind it off? No, that's not the way the manufacturer designed it. You leave it the way it is, you need to get the machine up, however, pry bar or something like that, to get this underneath it. Um, Make sure that you have the right capacity for what you're going to be lifting. If it's not, you need to get a big jack or get another jack. So if you follow the safety instructions, um, like I said, we want to look for cracks, um, whether they're in, in the lifting mechanism here, in the body, or in the, uh, the handle here. We want to check out for cracks. If there's anything like that, we, uh, we want to get a different jack. Take this one out of service, tag it that it's bad, and get a different jack. If, if you maintain these things and you, you pay attention to what you're doing, you're going to be able to go home healthy at the end of the day.
and that's what we're shooting for.